to be thought of as um, sort of uh, exactness, right? So exact, exact uh, requirement. And you can also, uh, equal sign is, is uh, it's not an equation here, but used as an inequality. Think of it as uh, representing two constraints. Uh, greater, uh, less than equal to and greater than equal to. All right, so I want you to steer away from thinking equal sign as equation because we're talking about constraints here. All right, and uh, thinking about equal sign as equation will confuse us, especially when you're learning this the first time. So I keep myself uh, aware of the fact that equal is not equation. And don't try to solve it by cancelling and all that stuff by thinking of equal sign as a pair of constraints less than equal to and greater than equal to at the same time we'll see some examples of that okay so some uh, for, uh, further terms in lp solutioning a uh, feasible solution a feasible solution satisfies all the constraints so we'll have a bunch of less than equal to greater than equal to uh, like five inequalities a feasible solution will meet, will satisfy, will, will agree with all the problems constraints, all the inequalities. Example, two constraints. Don't spend more than $20,000 working capital. Don't use more than 10 workers. If a particular solution says produce uh, 10 glass doors and five glass windows, right? So you will have to use some money to buy material. You have to use some workers to produce them. You will end up using say $10,000 of working capital and uh, three workers. Okay, so that's okay, it's feasible because we can do it. Feasible in real life means can be implemented. All right, so feasible is a word in mathematics satisfies all constraints. But you must always think of the parallel. And it is thinking along this parallel that is where your expertise comes in. That is why companies favor your, your know-how. That is why company hire you, right? So um, a feasible solution is a point here that satisfies all the problems constraints. In real life, a feasible solution tells us that it can be done in real life. No problem. We have the money. We have the number of workers. Example, what is an infeasible solution? We only have 20,000 working capital. We only have 10 workers. How about producing 500 glass doors and 2,000 glass windows? Well, then you will need $5 million of working capital and uh, 600 workers. Clearly, we don't even think about it. Right, that's not possible. So, so it will break the inequalities on the mathematical side, and it will basically get us a scolding in real life. It's not doable in real life. So it's nice to have this one-to-one -one parallel. If it is feasible mathematically, it can be done in real life. If it is not, then no. Nice, because now we are seeing real life happening in mathematics. There's a basically one-to-one -one correspondence, which is nice, right? So that when we might finally found an optimal solution, first of all, optimal solution is a feasible solution. It satisfies all inequalities. Remember, when it does so, it means we can do it in real life. In addition, not only that we, we can do it in real life, mathematically, it gives us the best uh, objective value. Therefore, in real life, it gives us the highest amount of profit. Nice, right? So somehow the mathematics has been worked out here that when you do a certain combination of glass windows and glass doors, too many glass windows, no good. Too many glass doors, no good. Right? Amazingly. So certain combination will give you uh, the maximum amount of profit given the limitations you have about working capital and workers. All right, so that's optimal, optimal, and therefore we should do it. It's a shame that we have this amount of working capital, this number of workers, and you somehow just do a combination which is suboptimal. You can't get, get the most profits out of this uh, available resources. So it is kind of a shame that if we have learned this, we don't use it, and that will be quite uh, a sort of a... Uh, 
suboptimal way to to conduct things, right? Okay, so so that's some terminologies about linear programming. And uh, what's the big fuss in the word linear? Linear simply means that everything that is involved in the model will be linear, right? Will be in uh, line form graphically, but since we can't really see it in high dimensions, what this means is that uh, terms involving variables will not have, uh, or rather will have only powers of zero or one. So essentially it's just one. So here we have a linear expression because the powers of x1, x2, x3, they are one, right? So we can say that it is basically x3 to the power of one, but we don't quite write that because that's understood. Okay, so uh, what about to the power of zero? Well, it just means that we can we can add a five here, or we can say it's less than or equal to uh, minus five, or uh, less than or equal to 10. So 10 is linear because it is multiplying by x1 to the power of zero. So that's okay. But what is not okay is x1 to the power of uh, 0 0.3 plus square root of x2. Well, that's nonlinear. Um, how about sine of x3? That's nonlinear. All right. So anything, there's a lot of nonlinearity in mathematics. Right? And only, well, if you kind of look at it as a set, then linear stuff is just one small subset of the whole realms of mathematics. So linearity is... Um, uh, just a just a quick word on why we talk about linear programming. There is, of course, non-linear programming. However, uh, when we discuss linear programming, it is not just that linear functions, linear expressions are easier, are simpler. All right. Uh, we are not doing this for academic purposes because once we learn linear programming, it is able to actually solve a uh, pretty decent and complex commercial and real life problems. And uh, why will there be shortcomings? Because in real life, most things are non-linear, right? Uh, yes and no. For example, is it true that uh, uh, we the more marketing budget that we spend, the higher is our sales? X axis marketing expenditure, Y axis our sales. True, right? But also true is that uh, for certain products and certain markets, the higher you spend, the product might be overexposed and that lead to consumers not liking your products and then sales might drop. So we should be finding uh, non-linear programming more useful than linear programming. But if you are doing uh, your business, all right, your business could be somewhere operating here because your budget is uh, up to uh, $50,000 of advertisements. So maybe that is the operating range of your department of your marketing division then you essentially can just look at a uh, linear linear function to to uh, get things done because this is good enough right so it is a good enough approximation so even though it is linear it is not that bad it is able to help us solve quite a good chunk of problems so long as we restrict the domain of discussion or the search for optimality to the linear part of what might be a non-linear performance right so it is still very useful and therefore we should uh, master this tool now in uh, linear programming problems we will have to write down lp model or else lp formulation so in exams, for example, we might be asking you, write an LP model for uh, Jonathan's company, given these constraints and his concerns, you know, something like that. So uh, what are you supposed to be writing? So this slide here will summarize everything that we expect of you. Four sections, four sections. Now to give you a bit of context, let me sort of uh, paint the story that uh, I am the business owner of a glass factory. We manufacture two kinds of products only, two and only two, glass windows and glass doors. Now, uh, glass windows, glass windows. when I sell them, I get $500 profit. That sounds a lot. Uh, let's say $5 profit. So $5 profit, 
per glass window sold. Uh, for glass door, right, I can get seven dollars profit. So I wonder every week how many glass windows should I make? How many glass doors should I make? Now you might say, well, that's not even a question. Make infinite number of windows and doors because then you can sell infinite number of them and you get infinite profits. But that's not the kind of problem we are talking about. We want real uh, implementable, that means feasible solutions, okay? not nonsensical solutions. Now, uh, to make glass windows and glass doors, I need glass material, so I need to buy, right? So uh, suppose um, glass window and glass door, they uh, take up different quantities of, of uh, materials. So each glass window takes up two square feet, two square feet of glass, uh, glass material. And each window, sorry, each door takes up three square feet, being a bit larger. Okay, so um, and then every week we buy nineteen thousand, a uh, nineteen square feet of of uh, glass material. So if that's the case, then we can say that uh, each glass window takes up two square feet. Okay, but I want to manufacture some number of glass windows. What should that be? What should that be? If we make all the uh, all the glass material into glass windows, we can, all right. But that would mean we get only five dollars per glass window. But we should sell more uh, for for glass door because we should do that. So let's do nineteen square feet and then do all windows, uh, all doors, and then we can get higher profits. That's good, but doors take up fifty percent more material than than uh, windows and do not return 50% more profits than window so what's it going to be right so let's not try to solve it numerically so if you're starting to think like well let me try 19 divided by uh, 3 and how many doors then times 7 and all that you will be becoming a number cruncher and that's not what we want you to do right rather i want you to focus on translating the business problems uh, problem into this form with the four sections okay so i have two products to make i just don't know the quantities i have question marks right so i have question marks how many and how much kind of question marks 